What's up, what's up, guys? You tell us, uh, okay. Uh, but let, let me begin. Uh, my, my name is Gaurav Savant. I'm a journalist from India. Hi, Gaurav. Hi, Gaurav. What, what's your name, sir? My name is Ila Berezenko. Ila Berezenko. I am a TV correspondent for Ukrainian TV channel Espresso. And uh, after uh, Russians decided to wage war against Ukraine, I decided to take up arms to defend my hometown brewery that is down the other road. And my family, they are still there. And I decided to defend them. And microphone wasn't enough. He's a television correspondent. He's a TV journalist who now has an assault rifle in his hand. He has a commando dagger and his bulletproof jacket. And this road where we are, how far are we from the Russian-Ukrainian front lines? Uh, just about two or three kilometers down this road, there was a huge tank battle two days ago. And Ukrainian armed forces was uh, able to destroy it, uh, Russian uh, heavy armored vehicles column and they retreated, spread across villages over there. We have relatives in these villages and they reporting that Russians are threatening civilians and also have destroyed few homes with their heavy tanks and killed few people. We are checking every vehicle that's coming from that way. And in these vehicles, there are a lot of people whose homes were destroyed by Russian ground forces, unfortunately. But we believe that the, the day will come and people will return to their villages and rebuild their homes. Indeed, hope so. Now, you are saying that the Russians are barely two to three kilometers from where we are and they are uh, uh, targeting homes in their area. Do we have a rough assessment of the number of Russians in terms of tanks, a uh, APCs and individual soldiers? Uh, two days ago, there were a lot of them. There were, there were a heavy battle, main battle tank division, I think, or even more. You're saying a division of Russian army? A division? Yeah, yeah, about that number. But fortunately enough, uh, they were stopped in their tracks. Some of them were destroyed, and some of them was forced to retreat and spread across villages. Right now, we know that they are trying to gather forces again, and they're trying to uh, get their supply chain to their disposition and uh, but right now we don't have intelligence about uh, numbers uh, that they have gathered on this moment but Ministry of Defense of Ukraine is reporting that they are preparing another assault they're preparing another assault and you do hear a, you do hear commotion uh, uh, occasionally uh, where we are this is a forested area but it's also a built-up area uh, in, in the sense there are people living here, but there are also forests. How cold is it at night where you stand and defend your country and now not with a mic, but with an assault rifle? But is it is it only assault rifles that you have or do you have something more? We have a lot of uh, different equipment. We are territorial defense forces. We are supporting Ukrainian armed forces. Uh, I cannot disclose what kind of equipment we have, but we do have a lot. And uh, also our cities, our towns are pretty well fo fortified by uh, locals. Right now, uh, we do have uh, pretty cold weather. Uh, this is fortunate for us and unfortunate for Russians because we do have rotations and uh, places uh, where we are uh, quartering and Russians do not. The, that's why they are breaking in uh, people's homes and trying to heat themselves. That's a very interesting point you make. And Preeti, if I may, uh, the Ukrainian forces, they can go to their homes um, and there is rotation of troops that's happening. As far as the Russian forces are concerned and barely a couple of kilometers down the road, uh, as this young officer was telling us, uh, they're just a couple of kilometers down the road, but they are out there in this open. Minus six is what I'm told uh, the, the temperature is and falls to minus nine at night plus the wind chill factor. Yeah, winds are pretty heavy right now and it's pretty, pretty cold. That's why they are forced to uh, burn their fuel in their tanks to and their armored vehicles to heat themselves up and uh, to break into people's homes. An interesting point. Uh, fuel is extremely important to carry the convoy forward. Replenishments, uh, uh, at times, it's being reported for the Russian forces. It's a problem, though it's barely 90 kilometers from the Belarus border. Uh, uh, from where they are coming, is this that same axis, 90 kilometers from the Belarus border to Kyiv? I cannot tell you uh, what's the exact number of kilometers to Belarus border, but it's pretty close. 
and uh, so they're burning their fuel just to keep themselves warm they're unable to move forward because they're being challenged at every stage it's it's not a smooth ride so when people ask why is it that the russian forces are stalled why is it that they're not being able to move forward to kiev and kiev would be how, how you know the center of town would be how many kilometers from here according to you uh, I cannot disclose this information and safety reasons. Okay, okay. So, uh, though, though not very far is, uh, you know, is, is the assessment, but for speaking to us here, sir, many thanks. Do stay with me. We will con continue our conversation with you. But you can make out the distance is not much, but the fuel supply, the fuel supply uh, for the Russians is restricted and they're burning that fuel just to keep themselves warm, therefore not being able to move forward. Uh, point one and point two, they are being interdicted at every stage. The moment they try and move forward, their, their advance is stalled by the ATGMs, that, uh, the anti-tank guided missiles that target the Russian forces, stalling their advance, Preeti. All right, Gaurav. Uh, you know, Gaurav, I... Can I... Uh, because